Well, President Biden is now backtracking on his initial decision to leave Trump's historically low refugee cap in place. The administration is now announcing an increased cap by May 15th. We bring in Hill Media columnist and Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, good to see you. You know, I was watching the Sunday talk shows uh, yesterday. My wife hates it. She goes to another room, but I, I feel forced to listen to these things. I didn't hear much about immigration yesterday. Did you? I didn't almost hear anything about it, and this is a not even a crisis, but a catastrophe that we're seeing at the border, David. And look at what happened in Houston, where they actually had to close a facility because it was becoming so dangerous. You hear of reports of sexual abuse of young girls at these facilities in the United States, and you see the polling in terms of the way the president is handling this, and I think you just showed it, something like 55 percent disapproving, not even 3 in 10 approving. So why talk about something like that if it's uncomfortable? for any Biden administration officials to answer for. And again, we have a vice president that was tasked with going uh. down to the border and fixing this problem. She will not go to the border, and she said she's going to go to Mexico and Honduras for diplomatic reasons, but can't commit to a date at this time because of COVID restrictions, which makes no sense because she's fully vaccinated and the CDC says it's okay well, and to she's, travel internationally. She continues to laugh off the questions, and there are very few questions that are, that are posed or, or opportunities even for the press to ask her questions about that, but how much longer can this continue? I mean, she was given that portfolio by the president in front of uh, most of Americans who were watching that, and yet she's, she, I, I get the sense that what she is concerned about is her political future and that she's going to be weighted down by this immigration issue. Well, it will weigh her down if she doesn't solve the problem, because if she ends up being the Democratic nominee in 2024, then this will be her signature failure by not addressing this problem. And look, she was chosen as Joe Biden's running mate nearly eight months ago, David, and she has yet to do a press conference. And I heard somebody make this ridiculous argument. Well, vice presidents don't do press conferences. I'm old enough to remember 2020 when Mike Pence was out there on a daily basis taking dozens of questions as the head of the coronavirus task force, which was no easy task in any capacity, probably one of the hardest jobs at any any vice president has ever been handed. So I think she thinks she's above scrutiny, above accountability, above the press. And again, this border crisis is only getting worse and worse with nobody seemingly in charge of it at this point. Yeah. And, and thankfully, Joe Koch is here because uh, without Joe, the press would be without accountability. But uh, we did have ABC's Martha Raddatz uh, coming out with a pretty good reporting trip down to the border a, a few weeks ago when she was hosting this week on, on that Sunday show. Terrific reporting. Uh, she found out stuff that was, was pretty dramatic from the immigrants coming across that, in fact, uh, had it not been for what Joe Biden said, they wouldn't have made the trip to come. She was, she was hosting that same show yesterday, didn't say a word about immigration. Do you think they, they leaned on her not to talk about it? Oh, I would only be speculating, David, if, if that were the case. But you have to wonder where these decisions are being made in terms of what should be covered and what shouldn't be covered. And what you have is a media that seems pretty lost right now without Donald Trump. It was very easy to do a Sunday morning talk show rundown because it was all focused on Trump and mainly how horrible he was handling X, Y, Z from their perspective. So, yeah, I mean, we see now in I think it was President Trump's first 100 days, 93 percent negative coverage by major media outlets. And now we're seeing yeah. under the Biden administration, it's something like 60 percent positive coverage. The way you get the positive coverage is to not talk about things that are most problematic right. for a particular administration. And that's what's happening. At well, this point. Uh, one thing where there was payback was on 60 Minutes, that 60 Minutes profile on, on Governor DeSantis. I say profile, a lot of people would say hit job. It does seem that they had to pay a price for that. They got a lot of criticism. Uh, uh, from mainstream press sources as well. Have they owned up to that, that that was a hit job? Oh, no. They actually went on the air a week later and read reader emails praising them uh, for the <laughs> job that they did. They had a couple of critical ones, but it doesn't matter what, what reader emails say. Yeah. If you're 60 minutes, you have to go forward and say, we, we apologize. This obviously was done poorly. We omitted major things that DeSantis said in terms of his explanation around COVID vaccine distribution, and we got it wrong, just as they did with Dan Rather in 2004 when he did that horrific National Guard story on George W. Bush just a couple of days before that election. It could have turned that election. Remember, it came down to one state, Ohio, basically. Yeah. And Rather was fired, and his producer was fired, and they apologized. But this appears to be a different 60 Minutes in 2021 than well, the one that existed Well, it's a different media. It's a different ago. era for <laughs> the media itself. Uh, Joe Concha, I meant it. You keep people honest. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it.